say about being a CDL driver, getting a CDL driver, what is the process of going through uh, that you need to follow in order to get your commercial driver's license. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the mandatory entry level training that's now being introduced in some of the provinces here in Canada and some of the United States and other places in the world and this is because of traffic crashes that have occurred so we're going to talk about all of that and we'll be right back with that information. Hi there smart drivers welcome back talking to you today about CDL license, getting a CDL license, getting a job. If you're in a position where you're thinking about driving a truck or driving a bus in the world and want to start making money doing that uh, work, then this is the place you need to be. We're going to certainly help you out. Uh, Ryan is here from Regina and EB is here as well. If you're just tuning in, let us know where you're tuning in from in the world and what class of license you're considering to go for or what. Uh, whether you want to drive a bus or whether you want to drive a truck and we'll help you out with all of that. Uh, I am having, <laughs> this is the second day today that I have used the new interface on YouTube and it's giving me a bit of challenge so just bear with me a little bit while I get that working and whatnot. And uh, of course if you have any questions about a CDL license, getting a job, uh, finding work after you go to truck driving school because this is the challenge that a lot of students who go to truck driving school have is, is that after they're finished, after they complete their course at the truck driving school, uh, whether it's a bus license or whether it's a truck license and other endorsements and whatnot, unfortunately they're kind of left to their own devices and the schools don't really uh, help them find a job as much as they should. Uh, some of the schools in uh, my experience have a list of truck driving schools that will hire new drivers with little or no experience but what the counsel that I give to most students who leave truck driving school with a truck driving license is that you need to take a you need to take whatever job you can get for the first six months because you need to get driving experience whether that's driving uh, you know a passenger van 15 passenger van whether that's driving a dump truck, whether it's driving a farm truck, whatever it is, you know, whatever kind of work it is, it's gonna, it's not gonna be fun because it's gonna be a lot of work. I mean, there are exceptions to that rule and whatnot, but you're gonna have to do the work. You're gonna have to put in your time, so to speak, in order to get the job that you want. Because after you get six to 12 months of experience, you can pretty much go and do any work that you wanna do, whether that's local, regional, or long haul but there's always long haul work in truck driving. There's, uh, these companies are always looking for drivers. So that's one of the uh, places that you can find work. So watching from Connecticut is Tommy and EB is here from Ontario, Mississauga and working towards an AZ license. And just for those of you who may or may not know, class A is tractor trailer in Ontario and Z is their air brake endorsement. And if you're gonna get a CDL license, you're going to have to get a, an air brake endorsement because most commercial vehicles, uh, buses and trucks are going to be fitted with air brakes in this day and age. You know, smaller vans, uh, buses, those types of things may have some hydraulic brakes. Some of the school buses may have hydraulic brakes, but for the most part, uh, they're going to be fitted with air brakes. So you're going to have to get that endorsement as well uh, to get your CDL license. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over to the PowerPoint presentation. I have a PowerPoint presentation here for you. I'll go through the PowerPoint presentation and then we'll come back and we'll answer any questions that you may or may not have. As well, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, if you have questions, uh, Super Chat is available, always open to donations for the channel here to keep it going. And those are always greatly appreciated. As well, make sure you head over to the Smart Drive Test website and check out the courses over there. Uh, and I believe this week the Air Brake course is going to be on special. 30% uh, off so check that out as well if you are working towards a CDL license. Alright, uh, a saying, hey I had a bad experience with my instructor and it made me lose all my confidence. He told me I was really bad and kept making simple mistakes and should give up on getting my license. How do I build it back? A saying, definitely get a different instructor, okay? I instructors have no business telling you that kind of rubbish. Uh, just it, upsets me greatly when I hear that instructors say that to students 
They should never say that to a student. Um, I've worked with some students who've had challenges uh, recovering drug addicts and you know I've seen them work harder than anybody I've ever seen work in my life and deserve the chance and you know it's up to the instructor to figure out how to make that work and when instructors say that to students it, it just like I said it just it, 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 ah, <laughs> I just want to grab all of them and shake them you don't say that to students okay so uh, melt yes mandatory element uh, entry level training and I'll we'll talk a little bit more about that after I get done the presentation here so just bear with me to pop over and get that done all right uh, page up all right there we go there we go okay so you want to be a truck or bus driver uh, this picture of me here standing in front of the Peterbilt this is one of the trucks I did train in for a short period of time and uh, you may or may not be able to see the straight pipes on that truck uh, it was very loud very noisy and after about four hours in that truck I wondered what I was doing <laughs> sitting in that very noisy truck it wasn't as comfortable as I thought it might have been even though it was a Peterbilt uh, just bear with me get down to the right slide here okay so if you're new to smart drive test my name is Rick August uh, I was a truck driver through most of the 1990s uh, in the early 2000s I moved to Australia and drove Greyhound buses for them so I've also been a coach captain this is a picture of me when I had hair in 2002 and was driving buses for Greyhound uh, I was a licensed driving I became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997 I have trained mostly trucks and buses but I also worked as a driver rehabilitation specialist uh, working with drivers that were returning to driving after a debilitating injury or they'd lost a limb or whatnot and we were working with hand controls and helping them you know drivers with one eye and those types of things to overcome disabilities and be able to drive safely uh, in 2006 I graduated from the University of Melbourne in Australia with a doctorate in legal history which you may or may not know is the study of policing courts and prisons and oddly enough my expertise is in policing as it relates to traffic and so that's who I am all right uh, if you are considering a job as a truck or bus driver definitely have a look at this playlist the driving safely it's the New York CDL manual step-by-step -step explanation this is basically the chapter on PDIC and PDIC in the CDL industry lots of acronyms here <laughs> CDL commercial driver's license truck or bus PDIC stands for professional driver improvement course and it's essentially the defensive driving course for truck and bus drivers and this is essentially what chapter 2 does uh, from this uh, New York CDL manual and definitely have a look at that and as well I have a very long video uh, probably an hour and 45 minutes uh, that goes through step by step on that information for driving safely driving a CDL vehicle as well there's all these other supplementary videos that will support uh, some of the topics that are talked about in that uh, in that video and in that chapter for the CDL manual there in the state of New York the first thing you need to do is you, even before you start going to truck driving school handing over your money and signing up as a student at a truck driving school start looking for a job okay right away do not wait until you are finished your truck driving school your bus driving school to start looking for a job you need to get on the phone you need to start calling these truck driving companies and you need to say to them listen I'm going to truck driving school I just started I'll be done in about four to six weeks whenever you think you're going to be finished your course uh, and you're going to say I'm looking for a job uh, do you have anything available and they'll say yes or no we don't hire new drivers whatnot uh, and then you say well if, if they say no you say do you know anybody else that I might contact uh, for a job so I cannot s stress this enough that you need to start looking uh, even before you start truck driving school and this gentleman who's with me here in the thumbnail his name is Bill Walker uh, this was some years ago now probably four or five years ago now that Bill came in and was a student of mine uh, Bill started looking for a job even before he started truck driving school and uh, Bill finished with me on the Thursday and the next Tuesday Bill was working in the oil field so it can be done you can do networking you can get a job now you have to also understand that long haul truck driving and, and truck driving in the patch as, as it's called working in the oil fields is not desirable work you're they own you essentially and they're gonna own you for a good year and uh, it's it's hard work and uh, I was very impressed with Bill Bill was overweight as you can see he's a big guy 
Uh, he also had some medical issues. He had diabetes and a few other mental, uh, not mental health, <laughs> physical health problems. And he still went up and ran flat deck in the oil fields. And I just couldn't believe that he kept doing it because I remember training with Bill. He was underneath the truck and I'm like, oh, please don't have something happen because I can't pull you out of there if something happens. So that's what happened. So the other thing you need to consider when you're going to drive truck, and a lot of students will say to me, they'll come in when they're exploring what they're gonna do in truck driving school and thinking about getting a bus and those types of things. And they'll say, well, I just wanna drive a dump truck. All right, well, you need to think seriously about that because if you go to truck driving school and you get a tractor trailer license, 80% of what you're gonna to learn to drive a tractor trailer is applicable to a bus or a straight truck, like a dump truck, for example. And, it, and as well, if you go to work, so say for you go to work for an excavating company that does have dump trucks. Uh, for the most part, excavating companies do not hire just class three or class B licensed drivers. They hire tractor trailer licensed drivers because as soon as you put a pup on the back of a dump truck, it now becomes a class one vehicle. It now becomes a class A vehicle, a tractor trailer. Uh, and they will not hire you to drive that vehicle. And as well, it's a lot easier in terms of logistics and dispatch when somebody calls in sick, they, they can't go down the list and kind of figure out, oh, this person doesn't have the right license or this person doesn't have the right license. They just hire class one drivers and they can do that. They have that luxury of being able to do that. So everybody has to have a class one license. So it's much easier for you to get employed as a class one license than it is if you just have a bus license or if you have a straight truck license, such as a dump truck or whatnot. So get it all, get the tractor trailer license. Yes, it's gonna cost you a little bit more. Yes, it's gonna take a little bit more time, but the return on investment is going to pay dividends. You're gonna make that money back within a year of getting your truck driving license. And unfortunately, I'm, you know, that's probably not the case for those now in Ontario, but within two years, you're definitely gonna make that money back. All right, as well, when you go to truck driving school, for those of you in the United States, get every endorsement that you can get. Get the tanker endorsement. Even if you're not gonna drive tankers, get the TDG, transportation of dangerous goods, passenger vehicles and school bus, get all of those things. Even if you have no desire ever to drive around a school bus, get all of those endorsements because with all of those endorsements and you take them to an employer, it looks better on your resume and all of those certificates are gonna help you out. All right, even if you, are not, you don't ever use them, have them and it will help you out. I mean, I have a ton of uh, certificates that I don't post or put on my resume, but you can have a look at them over at my website. Just go over and read my autobiography and uh, you'll see that I have all of those stuff and all of that stuff makes you look better in, in terms of an employee. Now, one of the questions just at the beginning of the live stream before we get started here was, is there any work in truck driving? I mean, lots of, you know, the recession has hit, lots of smaller companies have closed their doors and those types of things. Yes, there is always work as a professional driver, especially if you have experience. Uh, I'm only, I don't drive truck only because I have another enterprise. I'm an entrepreneur, I have an online business. I teach you how to get a job as a bus or truck driver. I teach you how to get a license. Uh, and that's my job now. But I did drive truck through the 1990s and the early 2000s. And I was never unemployed unless I wanted to be. And as soon as I went to Australia, I wasn't employed a few weeks and I was driving buses and I, you know, I wanted to change from driving trucks. So I went on to drive buses with coaches. And you know, there's some kind of pros and cons to each one of those. And I, we can talk more about them uh, in the question and answer period. But I went on to drive buses, had a lot of fun driving buses, learned a heap of <laughs> stuff I thought I already knew when I was driving buses. And we can talk about that more. But as well, you know, look at this video, eight reasons to consider a career as a truck or bus driver. You know, there's pride in the job. You're always employed. There's different kinds of work that you can do, uh, different kind of jobs. So you can do local work, you can do regional work where you're gone maybe a day or two at a time, and then you can do long haul where you're gone, uh, you know, maybe a week at a time or two weeks at a time, depending on which company you're working for. There's also different kinds of work. You know, most of driving truck is going to be vans and general freight. You can also haul flat decks or you can haul uh, temperature controlled units, which are sometimes called reefers. And then there's all the vocational work, logging trucks, uh, dump trucks, those kinds of things. 
Uh, trucking is a challenge. I mean, there's never two days that are the same. You know, vehicles break down, you get stuck in traffic, you get the vehicle stuck, whatnot. And so there's, there's a lot of stuff that's going on. Uh, there's a lot of autonomy. You're not, you don't have a boss looking over your neck. It's basically just you moving freight between point A and point B and services, uh, a lot of self-direction, uh, you know, in terms of you getting the vehicle up and down the road and making decisions when you're driving. Uh, it's definitely not a nine to five job for most people and there's good money in it as well. I mean, you know, you gotta figure out that most of these people maybe don't even finish high school or you just have high school degree, uh, diploma rather. Uh, you can make fairly good money, especially if you're running long haul. I know a lot of long haul truck drivers after a couple of years are making sort of seventy to $100,000 a year as a long haul truck driver. Now, for a lot of people, that's not a desirable lifestyle, but for the people who can do it, who can go away and work as a long haul truck driver, they do make good money for basically the, the requirements to enter into the field. All right, so you need a license and you need to go to truck driving school, and there's five components of every truck driving school. And unfortunately, now what's happened with the minimum entry level training that's been brought in Ontario and other places here in Canada, and they're definitely considering it here in British Columbia uh, because of a major commercial crash that happened here uh, more than a year ago and a number of people were killed. Uh, unfortunately what they're doing now is half the time more than you know almost two-thirds of the time now is in the classroom and in the yard and basically in the yard they're teaching how to back up maneuver hook and unhook and do pre-trip inspection and you know all of that is great and you need to know that for the purposes of passing a road test but it's not going to make you a better driver. You need to get out, you need to drive the truck, you need to be able to move the vehicle in space and place around an urban setting because this is where most drivers get into trouble. They also get into trouble for backing up and most test centers in North America, in the world, do not test you beyond backing up in a straight line or backing up parallel parking, fairly simple things. Uh, I've been in some loading docks where the loading dock is definitely an afterthought uh, you know, they built the factory or whatnot, and then after they were finished, they said, well, you know, we need to put in some loading docks to get the trucks in here, and there is, like, no space to back that vehicle into where it needs to be put into. And I have a great deal of experience backing up a tractor-trailer unit because I ran office furniture into uh, some of the larger metropolitan cities in the United States, into Philadelphia, into New York City, Florida, Tampa, those types of places and I had to back in through parking lots and those types of things. So I know how difficult it can be to back up a tractor trailer unit and how much you know, experience you need in, in, er, in terms of managing space and place around your vehicle in tight and confined areas and looking in mirrors. So these are the components. So turning is the most important and unfortunately we just don't focus on that enough. Uh, Pre-trip inspection and then shifting the vehicle. Unfortunately, shifting a non-synchronous transmission, more so, you know, and this is beginning to wane a little bit as automatic transmissions make their way into the industry, but you still need to learn how to shift uh, because a lot of companies are simply not going to hire you unless you know how to sync, how to shift a non-synchronous transmission. As well, you're going to have to learn how to back up and you're going to have to learn how to couple. So these are the five components of any truck driving school. Of course, they're going to put a bunch of other stuff in there, especially if you're in the MELT program and you're taking a lot of classroom time, uh, they're just gonna put a lot of other information in there that's really gonna overwhelm you uh, when you're going to truck driving school. So experience, we talked about this at the outset in terms of networking and cold calling, and this is very much the truth in terms of finishing truck driving school that you can't get a job without experience and you can't get experience without a job. So you have to beg, borrow, and steal. And what I recommend to you is, is that when you come out of truck driving school, Get your resume in hand and start driving around to these truck driving schools. Go in, talk to the operations manager, talk to the dispatcher, the person responsible for hiring. Give them your resume. It's a little mini interview because you get a minute or a minute and a half of talking to the person who's responsible for hiring and tell them that you want to get a job driving a truck, driving a bus, driving a dump truck, whatever it is. Uh, I knew a guy, one of the guys who worked at the truck driving school. He actually went down to this truck driving school our truck driving company rather, and he sat in the lobby for three days before they finally hired him. He even told them that he would work for free. He said, I'll work for free for two weeks uh, if after two weeks you consider to give me a position here to drive a truck. And they hired him and he did exceptionally well. 
uh, they gave him an opportunity after two weeks, they finally brought him on and started paying him. Uh, and so, you know, that might be some of the things that you need to do in terms of getting a job as a CDL driver. So you need to think strategically about how to do that. Now, air brakes. Uh, you need to do air brakes as one of the courses for your CDL license or driving a bus. Unfortunately, as I've said, uh, it, this is a technical outdated course, 40 year old curriculum. They're still teaching this. And there's a lot of information in these air brake courses that no longer applies. Uh, manual front wheel limiting valves. There hasn't been one of these on a truck for 40 years. Uh, you know, there's lots of things on the system that are called, that have three names. For example, the treadle valve, the brake pedal, uh, the brake valve, uh, you know, all of that's outdated. It's just the stupid brake pedal and it's the service brakes. Uh, they confuse you with the term spring brakes, for example. Spring brakes, there, aren't, there, aren't, there isn't another system on the air brake system, it's just another power source to apply the brakes on the vehicle. So it's air pressure and spring pressure that apply the brakes and you have three brake systems. The service brakes, which is going up and down the road, you push down on the brake pedal, and then the parking emergency brakes. So when you park the vehicle, you pop the button out, exhaust the air from the system, the springs expand and apply the brakes. Now, if you go down the road and lose air pressure, and you're asleep and not paying attention to the air leaking out of the system, the parking brakes will now act as an emergency system and you will have to come to a stop. Now the other thing about an air brake system and an air brake course is that you need to learn the names of the valves in the system in that course and that can be confusing for students because there's a lot of valves and they do a lot of different things and unfortunately many of these courses don't even explain to you what a valve is or what a valve does. So consider taking the air brake course over at the Smart Drive Test website. And as I said this week, it's gonna be 30% off uh, that course. So you can consider that as well. So you need a higher level of driving knowledge when you go to a CDL license. One of them is definitely road signs and definitely have a look at this video on uh, 11 top signs for CDL drivers uh, in truck driving and bus driving school. And these signs, some of these signs could potentially save your life. And unfortunately, a lot of instructors in truck driving school don't explain to you what some of these signs mean. Uh, for example, the D, which stands for oversized loads, D stands for danger. And uh, you as a commercial driver driving a larger vehicle on the road, and this, this is, doesn't just apply to bus and truck drivers, this also applies to RV drivers or pickup truck drivers pulling an RV trailer and those types of things. You have to know that our oversized loads are approaching or you're beside an oversized load and you don't wanna just pull up beside them because now you've completely taken away all the space, the margin of space around your vehicle that could potentially keep you safe. So you need to know heights and dimensions. You need to know that your vehicle in Canada can only be a maximum height of 4.15 meters or uh, 13 feet, six inches in the States. It can only be 102 inches wide, which is eight feet, six inches and a maximum length in Canada of 23 meters or in the States, 75 feet is the maximum length for your unit. Now, most of these are standard, but the one that's gonna get you into trouble is the height. You need to know the height of your vehicle because if the sign doesn't say 4.15 meters or greater, you're probably not gonna get under that bridge or overpass or low uh, clearance. So know that. Also, you need to know weights of your vehicle. You need to know how much your vehicle weighs. In the States, uh, most tandem tandem trucks are 80,000 pounds, okay? They're gonna be 12,000 pounds in the steer and they're gonna be 34, 34,000 pounds. That's the way it works in the States. It's a little more complicated in, the, in Canada, but for the most part, it's in kilograms and a tandem tandem vehicle is going to be 5,500 kilograms on the front steer axles and it's gonna be 17,500 kilograms on each of the tandems. And we, again, we can talk a little bit more about weights uh, in the question and answer period. Now. Uh, CDL drivers for bus and truck drivers, you're gonna work with a dispatcher. Uh, dispatcher is your point of contact with the business. Uh, you want to foster a cordial relationship with dispatch. You simply do not wanna piss off dispatch. Uh, you piss off dispatch, you're gonna end up finding yourself sitting for a long time, especially for long haul truck drivers. The last place you wanna be is in a truck stop for a couple of days. It's not any fun, believe me you. Uh, so the job of dispatch, have a look at the video here on uh, dispatchers. Uh, you'll get much more information than what I'm just gonna give you here, but essentially what dispatchers do is match up available loads with available equipment and drivers. And there's a certain amount of time that you have to keep in touch with dispatchers so that they can do their job and you can do your job. And you want to keep in contact minimum once every 24 hours 
at minimum. There's going to be other times as well that you need to keep in touch with dispatch. But if you want to keep the wheels turning and moving up and down the road, you need to keep in touch with dispatch. You need to keep a good relationship with dispatch. All right, so good luck on your road test. Good luck with going to truck driving school. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. And we'll pop back over here. We'll have answer any questions you may have about uh, passing a road test, uh, going to truck driving school. There we go. Okay. And heading back over here. So excellent. Skyler, how are you? Um, undisputed. I still have trouble in identifying clutch biting point. Excellent. Okay. So undisputed. So one of the things you want to do. Okay. So, um, Undisputed, are you talking about a passenger vehicle or are you talking about a tractor trailer unit? Because that's gonna, that's gonna have different answers. Uh, David is here, hello David. Uh, Tommy, I have a CDL school that is near by where I live that will take me even though I have a disability. Excellent, so Tommy, if you can do that. Uh, yeah, if you have a disability, that's not gonna prevent you from getting a truck or bus driver's license. Uh, it's gonna be some challenges for you but there are certainly lots of positions that you could hold as a CDL driver uh, that you could do with a disability. As I was talking about Bill there in the, in the presentation, uh, Bill Walker uh, was a very large man. Uh, he had physical disabilities. I'm pretty sure he had diabetes and I know he had some other health issues as well. Uh, I used to talk about packing a lot of medication when he was going away on his trips for uh, working in the oil patch. So, you know, even if you have a disability, it's still something that you could potentially do uh, with driving a truck or a bus. I mean, you might even consider driving a bus or whatnot. So that is something that you can do uh, for getting a job and starting a job as a truck or bus driver, okay? Uh, David, any recommendations on what materials to study before taking my test in Montreal? In Montreal? Uh, David, what class of license are you going for there in Montreal? Uh, are you going for a truck or bus drive, driver's license or are you going for your regular car license? All right, so I was talking last night a little bit about the MELT, the mandatory entry level training that has now been implemented in Ontario. And I've, had, I've, I've heard information in the industry from other truck driving uh, instructors, other people in uh, safety, traffic safety professionals and whatnot that this is not working out for a lot of truck driving schools. It's not working out for a lot of students who are going through these programs and whatnot, unfortunately. But, you know, the government, once they put these things into place, it's unlikely that they're going to back down from these. Okay. It's unlikely that they're going to revamp them. It's unlikely that they're going to change them. It's unlikely that they're going to claw them back or abolish them. Unfortunately, once the minimum entry level training is in place, they tend to stick to their guns and say, oh, okay, we did our due diligence and we did our studies and this is working out. It's not likely that they're ever going to say, no, this isn't working out, <laughs> which is very unfortunate because uh, essentially what the truck driving, I think the only people that are benefiting from this are the truck driving schools in terms of revenue that they're generating in their programs. Uh, I think it makes it incredibly difficult for uh, truck driving students to go in and do the course at a truck driving school because even if the tuition is paid for, students who go to truck driving schools need to take six to eight weeks out of their life and somehow go to truck driving school. They need to figure out how to live, how to support their families, and then after that, depending on how long, even though there's no guarantee at the end of truck driving school, uh, another two or three weeks before they actually find a job, so how long do they have to support their life uh, before they actually start working they actually start making money because most of us could not just take two or three months out of our life and expect to continue to work and support ourselves and those types of things. There's a lot of factors that I think uh, bureaucrats and government officials have not considered in terms of people who are doing these courses and moving into the industry uh, to help the industry move forward and help these people to actually become professional bus and truck drivers. Uh, okay. Uh, test is in three days. I'll let you know if I pass. Okay, Asan, all the best. Uh, take care with that. Okay, so David, trucker's license. Uh, yeah, just, you know, focus on uh, your pre-trip inspection, David. Focus on your turns, getting the vehicle around, whatnot. Uh, be able to do your hook and unhook. Uh, I'm sure the instructor's already told you what you need to do for the purposes of backing up on your road test. 
what is required and you've done those practice and you've been able to you're able to back up well and do that and whatnot all right Harold uh, big tip if you're going into truck driving your life and those around you matter more than the load no matter what you haul or how late you are safety first yes and that's a good point that Harold made and one of the jobs that I had some years ago when I was working at a, uh, a school not a school where I was working at a company uh, they this was in the days before cell phones this was in the day before GPS and those types of things yeah <laughs> the industry has changed a lot because of technology uh, you know in some ways and in other ways the industry is still the same however what Harold said here uh, back in my day before cell phones and they couldn't get in touch with you it was basically phone me in an hour phone me in an hour and so I did that all day I'd been off for the weekend it was Monday phone me in an hour we don't have a load for you we don't have a load for you and this went on all day so finally at the end of the day I went out came back a couple hours later 8 o'clock at night oh we have a load for you okay where am I going I'm going to Delaware from Cambridge Ontario which was you know a six to seven hour drive and I s said to him okay what's the destination so I heard what the destination was and the load of office furniture was going down into a warehouse and I said to them no I'm not I've been up all day I said I'm not gonna drive all night to go to the warehouse and you know to be there in the morning I'll leave in the morning I'll get up early and I'll come in I'll be there at five o'clock and I'll leave in the morning to go and they're like no you need to go right now I, I just said no I said if you're really that adamant you're gonna have to find somebody else to do it and the dispatcher basically said to me well you're fired and I said well fine I'm fired and that's what happened and, and it's what Harold said here you got to put your own safety before other people you know and basically what I should have done in, in, you know but I mean I was probably at the end of the job uh, coming back to what Harold said I should have said yeah I'll come in and do it I should have gone in got the truck drove down the road an hour and went to bed and got up in the morning and finished driving down to the place right and said oh I was late they probably would have still fired me you know there's a time when <laughs> you're working at truck driving companies and other places that you know the end is nigh and you know it was just probably easier what I did but that's what you can do is the other thing you can do is yes I'll take the load go in hook the trailer up check your load drive down the road for half an hour find a place to pull over and sleep and then just go to sleep and get up in the morning and carry on with your load because your safety your family's safety uh, you know you need to come home at the end of the week so that's what you need to do uh, Fida, I love to be a truck driver, but unfortunately my eyes are weak in spite of putting glasses on. Second question, where and how to get in this profession? Uh, Fida, what if, uh, so have they told you that your eyesight is a limitation on you getting a CDL license? Is the, they haven't given you any more information on that? Okay, uh, sir, can you tell me the way or channel to get it, to get in? Okay, so just try to go back to the beginning of the live stream here, watch what's going on with the presentation and those types of things, and that will give you some information about how to go to truck driving school, how to apply, uh, start looking for a job as, even before you get into truck driving school, and all of that is going to help you out uh, as you know working towards getting a job as a truck or bus driver. Now, what I said was at the beginning is that if you have a truck or bus license uh, get the top license get the tractor trader license even if you have no intention of driving a tractor trader you can still go and work for companies as a bus driver or work a, a, in another profession you know driving a small van for example doing something else uh, you can still do the work that you need to do but you're going to be much more employable especially uh, at the beginning of your career because you're going to start working at some of these places that are going to be undesirable jobs you're just going to find it really tough in the beginning because it's a bit of a transition you're changing your life uh, truck driving companies expect a lot from drivers uh, and it's a bit of a lifestyle so you're you tend to be a bit more transient at the beginning of your career because you haven't quite figured out what you want to do yet and the reason that I suggest to you is that I counsel you to, to seriously consider getting a truck driving license is because if you get a truck driving license tractor trailer unit and you get you stop working at one place you can basically walk across the road and get a job at another place quite easily especially you got a little bit of experience and this is what happened with Bill Bill Walker who I said was really effective at networking and cold calling 
uh, and that he finished with me his driver training at the truck driving school on Thursday and then on the next Tuesday was working in the oil fields. He only worked for about six months for the one company that he actually got the job at because he didn't like the job, he didn't, he, you know, didn't get along with the people that he was working with and essentially within one of the other senior management left and went to another company, he, he basically followed that senior management on to the next company. And because he had his tractor trailer license, it was very easy for him to move on to the next position. Whereas had he had a straight truck license or just a bus license, it would have been difficult for him to do that. So that's one of the reasons why I counsel you to get a tractor trailer license. It's the same thing when I was driving truck, when I was driving bus, I had a tractor trailer license and it's the same thing. That company that called me up and said, oh, we got to run for you. You need to go down to this warehouse and unload this furniture. And I said, I was, I was done, I quit. Uh, essentially at the time I was working for a personnel agency and because I was working for a personnel agency, uh, basically I was working three days later for a different company and it was very simple, very straightforward. Uh, uh, for those of you, this is another option for truck drivers and CDL drivers who are looking for work. Uh, if you are looking for work and looking for a job as a truck or bus driver, uh, work for a personnel agency. Yes, you're gonna make a little bit less money, but if you're working for a personnel agency, they have lots of different companies that they're supplying drivers to. Uh, you work for the personnel agency, but you go to work for the truck driving company. The other reason that I work for a personnel agency is because I like the challenge of it personally. And doing long haul, working for different companies, uh, they'd call me up at eight o'clock at night. I mean, this was back in the days before I had a family and I was single. Uh, and they would say, you know, truck 349, trailer 101, 623. Uh, it's at this company, uh, you can find the paperwork, go down to the second door on the left of the building, go in, you'll find the paperwork in locker 309. Uh, you need to be in Chicago in the morning. I loved it. It was very challenging. Uh, it was work that I did. Uh, you know, I wasn't so crazy about being in different people, different trucks all the time, but that's what I did. And I, you know, I learned a lot from doing that kind of work. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Fida, you're new to the country. Okay, so yeah, so Fida, if you're new in the country and as long as you have your immigration papers and work, are in order and you can get a license, then you're gonna be able to move forward and get a job as a CDL license. That's not gonna hold you up, my friend. Okay, Daniel, uh, Daniel, sorry, apologies. I'm a working towards my CDL B at my place of business. I can't go for the higher one since we don't have uh, too many tractors. Okay, uh, so basically, Daniel, what you're doing is you're at a company, you've got access to equipment at the company and you're working towards your CDL license. No, that's gonna work out for you. If you're gonna come back and work at that company, uh, I would you know, try and encourage you, if you can get a hold of a tractor trailer unit, then do the, the higher class license. As well, if you're just using the equipment at a company to get your license and they're helping you out and they're sponsoring that, then what I would suggest to you is, is do spend some money and do a lesson or two with a commercial driving instructor and that way they'll be able to give you feedback on uh, information or things that you're not doing for purposes of passing the road test because you, you don't want to fail your road test uh, because you didn't work with a professional driving instructor. Remember, professional driving instructors teach people how to pass a road test every day. So you need to be able to pass your road test every day and you need to, or, sorry, <laughs> In order to be successful in passing your road test, work with a professional driving instructor because that's what they do. They teach people how to pass a road test every day and they know exactly what the examiners are looking for uh, at the test center where you may be taking your, your license or whatnot. Uh, Nathan, hello my friend, how are you? Okay, so Asan has his license in three days. We already talked about that, that's brilliant. Uh, Daniel, okay, excellent. So if we have any more questions, I'll be around for a little bit. I'm gonna go for about another five minutes here and then I'll wrap this up. But there are jobs as a CDL driver. Like I said, I was never unemployed unless I wanted to be unemployed as a CDL driver. And I know that if you know my life ever got bad or this didn't work out or I wasn't making enough money, I could go and get a job working part-time as a bus or truck driver and make a bit of extra money on the side. You're always employable as a bus or truck driver. 
Uh, and like I said, there's lots of variety in the industry. If you don't like one of the jobs that you might be doing now, you can go and get another job and work at something else and you know, be happy in what you're doing. Uh, Daniel, we have a guy at the company who does that. He's out with me when I go. Oh, excellent. Okay, so you have somebody at the company who is a driving instructor. Excellent, uh, that's really great. I'm happy to hear that you're working with somebody who is a driving instructor can help you out to pass your license because I've worked with people in the past. Uh, I've been called out uh, and I went out with one guy, this was years ago, uh, and they called me in to do an evaluation on this guy to see if he was ready for going for his road test. And uh, I got in the truck with him and I was like, he could barely shift the truck, let alone move it around an urban area or back it up or hook and unhook according to all of the sequences that are required uh, for passing a road test. And I basically said to him, I said, you, you really need to take a few lessons with a driving school because uh, what you're practicing is not going to work for you to pass a road test. And as well, I know that there's a lot of truck drivers out there who are going to be keen to help you out to pass a road test, but know that driving a truck is not going to prepare you to pass a road test. And I too made that mistake uh, when I was driving truck. I had a friend of mine who wanted to learn how to drive truck. I said to him, listen, I said, you, you, know, you can go out and rent a truck for the weekend. We'll go up, we'll do some driving and you can just go and take your road test because essentially that's what I had done. But then the industry had begun to, or the licensing for CDL licenses had begun to change by that point. And uh, he wasn't successful in passing his road test because I was a truck driver. I wasn't a driving instructor. And it wasn't until I became a driving instructor that I began to understand the difference between, you know, just driving the vehicle up and down the road safely for the purposes of, you know, getting a job as opposed to going out and actually passing your road test because there's certain strategies, techniques, and abilities that they require for you to be successful on passing a road test. Uh, hall phase, not a worry at all. How are you, my friend? Uh, Tommy, I'm planning on getting a Class B CDL, but I was thinking about getting a Class A CDL instead, but I'm going to talk to the school and see what they say about it. Tommy, I'm going to counsel you to get a tractor trader license, get a uh, Class A license. If you can come up with the money, you can do the time, it's going to be, it's going to be a better return on investment for you. Uh, in the end because it's going to be easier to find a job. It's going to be easier to find work It's going to be easier to stay employed and as well For those other lower class licenses, you're going to do 80% of the work. It's only a little bit more It's only 20% more to get your tractor trailer license and it's the same thing with air brakes everything you learn in the air brake course uh, Is applicable to tractor trailers There's only a very small portion of that that is not going to be applicable to tractor trailers if you go for a lower class license so Try and get a tractor trailer license. Uh, Harold, you can drive a class B with a class A as far as I know, just not a class A with a class B. Yes, and that's true. So what I'm saying is, is that you get the higher class license, you can drive everything underneath it, but if you get a lower class license, if you wanna drive a tractor trailer, you, you have to move up to that. And as I said, dump trucks, as soon as you put a trailer on the back of a dump truck, which is called a pup, as soon as you put a pup on the back of that dump truck, it's now a class one, class A vehicle. So you need that higher class license to even work in an excavating company. All right. Uh, hall phase, how's the learning path up to CDL job like? Well, first of all, you have to get a license hall phase. Uh, just go back in the, on the replay of the live stream here and, and watch that and that'll take you through the steps to go to truck driving school, apply for uh, going and enrolling in a school and working towards getting your CDL license uh, to get a job as a truck or bus driver. All right, so I think we're just going to wind up here. Uh, if anybody else has any questions, I'll be around for a little bit and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions in the comments and whatnot. Uh, if you're watching on the replay, hit that thumbs up button as well. Leave us questions. Let us know where you're tuning in from in the world and if you're working on going for a truck or bus license and we'll help you out with that. And as well, I'm going to be doing a live stream for CDL drivers on a particular topic every week now. I'm probably going to do some PDIC stuff. As I said before, PDIC is the Defensive Driving for Truck Drivers, and it stands for Professional, Deve uh, Professional Driver <laughs> Improvement Course, which is, as I said, the Defensive Driving for 
uh, truck driving. So I'm probably going to do those on Tuesday because I'm free Tuesday at noon so I can do that. Uh, David, what is the difference with truck trailer licenses? So David, if you're driving the larger trucks uh, and you got a tractor trailer license, truck and trailer, uh, you're going to need a CDL license to pull a trailer. And most trailers on large trucks all have air brakes. So if you put a, a pop on the back of a dump truck, it's got air brakes on it. Or you put a flat deck on the back of a truck to pull an excavator or whatnot. Uh, you're going to need a class one CDL license. It's going to be, it's either going to be class one or class a for that tractor trailer license. But once you get that tractor trailer license, you need to, you can drive everything underneath it. You can get a bus endorsement, a school bus endorsement, uh, transportation of dangerous goods, tanker. And, uh, here in British Columbia, they really like their super B so you can drive those as well. So all of that's going to help you out. All right. So I'm, as I said, I'll be around for a little bit. If you have any more questions and comments and whatnot, uh, leave us a question. We'd be more than happy to help you out. And as I said, I'm going to get going on this on Tuesday. So look for that information and we'll talk to you then. So if you've had a road test in the last couple of weeks, congratulations on passing your road test. And you have a road test coming up. Good luck on that. And we'll talk to you soon. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now.